Welcome to the fourth podcast of Comic Book Debate. I am your host, as always, Editor-in-Chief Shiraz Faruqi, and I'm joined by my brother, Zayan. What's up, guys? My cousin, Umar. Hey, guys. And today we have a very special guest. Uh, it's the legendary voice actress of Wonder Woman, uh, Susan Eisenberg. Hi, guys. <laughs> so... Uh, Susan, you know, just having you first, I got to thank you in, in front of our entire audience for uh, joining our call. You know, we're all lifelong friends, uh, lifelong fans of yours. And uh, it just means so much. I mean, uh, we've been listening like you are the voice that guided us like every Saturday morning sitting with our bowl of cereal, you know, and listening to you. I know you, you said that to me earlier. Yeah. And I have to say that was like the sweetest the sweetest thing you could have said because oh. just the image of like these, you know, little kids with their cereal watching on Saturday morning. I mean, they're just, it's just so sweet to me. So thank you for oh, sharing of that. Of course. And our experience is one that's shared with a countless amount of people, you know, little boys, little girls, so many people were impacted by your show. Uh, even up to this day, there's people who watch it on rerun, uh, watch it on DVD. They watch it uh, any way they can. I know anytime my younger cousins uh, are in the house and I want to show them something, I'll always pull out that Justice League DVD and show them an episode. So, you know, these kind of things are very, uh, very much timeless. Uh, that being said, uh, let's just kick off right here. Uh, so, Susan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? your upbringing, your background, uh, give us like your origin story. <laughs> <laughs> well, unlike Wonder Woman, I only have one, so it doesn't get too complicated. Um, I'm originally from the East Coast. I'm from Providence, Rhode Island, and I came out here many years ago after I graduated college to pursue an acting career and did a lot of, um, worked a lot of jobs in the industry behind the scenes and then was lucky enough to get put in front of a camera when I quickly realized that that was not my comfort zone and um, decided to pursue voiceover instead. And since then, um, you know, it's just been, that's been my number one pursuit is having the voiceover career. So, hey, Susan Zayon here. So, Hi. Um, has acting always been your dream to go into that field or... Was there something in your childhood that influenced you or impacted you to pursue this uh, area? Uh, you know, acting was my number one um, ambition. And it, 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 ever since I was a child, I was just enamored by show business. So it was really like, how am I going to get into that? Um, you know, I was one of those kids that listened to Frank Sinatra and watched Johnny Carson's show, which you, you know, probably, um, you probably don't know these people, but you know, it's like, that's, that was my idea of show business and the entertainment industry and California really embodied that. So growing up, you know, near Boston, it was like all about wanting to go to California and, um, you know, and, and, and here I've been all these years. And then when I was a, when I was younger, I would do radio ads for my dad's business. Um, I would go on the radio and do it during a weekly radio program. When it was the commercial break, I would do the ads for his department store. Oh, so wow. I knew that that existed, that I could do that in a very, <laughs> you know, small way. But it wasn't like I, at that age, thought, well, I'm going to be a voiceover artist. It, that didn't occur to me. But I knew that I eventually, you know, looking back on it, it all tied in rather nicely. Oh, that's, that's nice. very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> to answer one of your previous questions, yes, we do recognize those names. A lot of them are timeless, like, uh, especially because we're lifelong New Yorkers. So, like, the name Sinatra, just like, no matter how, what generation you are, that name has uh, resonance, you know. So. That's, and that makes me so happy because, you know, he deserves to keep going, as they say. Exactly. Yeah. Um, my question is more about like getting the role of um, you know voicing Wonder Woman. Like I'm hearing your voice right now, and it's pretty crazy that we actually have you on our podcast. Because, um, and I've said this in previous with previous guests as well. Like a lot of um, like because we grew up with hearing your voice as as Wonder Woman, you basically are that, right? Like for yeah. us as fans, mm -hmm. we just see you as that. Like we. 
you know, when we hear, anytime we hear your voice, it's, it's pretty, um, it's pretty unsettling. Um, yeah, definitely. It's like Wonder Woman. How, uh, how did you actually get the, the role for Wonder Woman specifically? Just, you know, the old fashioned way, just auditioning, um, which is what we do pretty much every day if we're lucky. And it was, you know, I knew that it was for Wonder Woman. So, you know, there was that added um, excitement of reading for the role. And then I got a call back, which, you know, you don't, you don't have that many callbacks in voiceover as opposed to on camera where you often have callbacks. Um, so this was such a big role. They wanted to see us. They wanted to see the, you know, the next tier a second time. So we had to go to Warner, you know, we had to go to Warner brothers and uh, met with Bruce Tim who created the show and also Andrea Romano who voice directed it. And Bruce gave me a picture of what you and I eventually saw Diana Prince looking like, and um, and I did the callback, and it was very nerve wracking and and terrifying and exciting, and then it was, it felt like months, but it probably wasn't months; it was probably weeks that I heard that I booked the job, and um, you know, it was a game changer. As I've said it many times, I mean, it was the greatest professional gift of my career. I wouldn't be talking to you guys. I wouldn't really be known if it weren't for her. And, um, and you know, and that's, that's how I got the gig. So how, how was that feeling, you know, getting that call that you got the role as Wonder Woman? You know, it, it, it just is so thrilling and exciting. And I still feel that way. You know, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I, I still get to voice her. It may not be in projects that are just, like the Justice League, it, you know, for instance, Injustice, um, yeah. you know, she's a very different character in Injustice, especially Injustice 2, but it's still Wonder Woman. So, you know, you're lucky that you have that continuity, which is very unusual for any job in this business um, to keep going and to be able to grow up with her. When I first started, um, I was really, really, I had done voiceover, but I'd never been a lead character in a series and uh, I was really nervous and it worked because Diana was nervous as well. I mean, she was not maybe nervous like I was, but you know, she was in a different place in her life. She was leaving the mascara. Um, she was, you know, going to a man's world, if you will. And all of this, all of her changes, um, it just worked with what I was going through also. Not that I was leaving the mascara, but, I was, you know, it was uncharted territory to me. Oh, that's, and so that's I could use that excitement and that energy and that nervousness, um, you know, in that first season, which is all real. <laughs> I mean, it was all, it's all there. And, and just speaking on that, I mean, uh, it feels like that, you know, like it happens with some of the most iconic voice actors. You think of yourself, you think of uh, Kevin Conroy, that line between actor and hero it starts to blur and i think that's what umar said before like after after a while like i'm it's like we're speaking to wonder woman it's like the character's been so ingrained uh with you and like you said before like you went on a journey the same time uh wonder woman was going through her journey especially in the first season which was almost like an origin story for her i think the first episode was the first time she even put on that wonder woman costume so right. uh that's pretty amazing. And just to jump back a little bit, uh, you mentioned that you met with Bruce Tim and Andrea Romano. Uh, how were those auditions like? Like, did they give you uh, lines from the comics or from Super Friends or from the '60s? Uh, well, Linda Carter they gave show. Me, they gave they gave her, you know us all lines from what would be the scripts. So um, yeah, we had they, you know they had written some things already. So we just got to read those words and try as best as you could to make them come off the page and um, breathe some life into this character and not be as, not sound as scared as you were because it was a lot of pressure. I mean, it was, um, you know, there, there are so many layers to it. I mean, voice, being able to voice this iconic, extraordinary character is one piece of it. And then the other piece is actually, you know, getting a job as an actor, you, you want to work and, you know, you want to get to the big leagues and being included in that callback process was, um, really, really, really thrilling. 
but it was nerve wracking. And because you know, there's a lot on the line. So yeah. you, you don't want to, you don't want to blow it. And, um, you know, so it's a lot of pressure. It's pressure you put on yourself and just pressure in the room. Um, so it was, it was, uh, it was really memorable because, um, you know, you just want to hit it out of the park. If I can continue with my baseball analogies, <laughs> uh, it, you know, you just want to hit it out of the park. And at the same time, you're really scared, or at least I was, I can't speak for other people, but I was really scared. What influences did you draw from when trying to figure out Wonder Woman's voice or any kind of voice that you've heard? on? I didn't, or? I didn't, you know, it, because it honest, honestly, um, it felt very instinctual and I, I wasn't channeling anyone other than my own strength and my own sense of this or that, you know, so, so Andrea would say, you know, you have to always remember that this is a, a warrior and a princess. And so there's always something royal about her and there's always um, something, uh, you know, strong and, Amazonian about her and you, you always have to play those two things simultaneously and so then it's just you know like they give you a character and then it's your job to give that character voice um quite literally and so that's what I was able to do but no it wasn't like I was thinking of Linda Carter or um you know Catherine Hepburn or Betty Davis or somebody else it was just trying to stay within, you know, the description that they'd given me, the picture that Bruce had given me, and staying within that framework and bringing what I could bring to the part. Oh, that really, that's really amazing. And Susan, tell us your relationship with Wonder Woman before the series. Like, uh, were you a fan? Were you a person who read maybe comics here and there? Or were you very familiar with uh, Wonder Woman uh, as a child, uh, maybe watching Linda Carter in action or watching Super Friends? Like, what was your relationship with Wonder Woman prior to uh, being in contention for the role and ultimately getting it? My only experience with her was from Wonder from um, the TV show with Linda Carter. I, I I didn't watch Super Friends. I didn't know about. But when I booked the job, everyone mentioned Super Friends to me. So I quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I quickly uh, got educated on that, but no, it was it was really through Linda Carter, and I wasn't a fan in that I didn't grow up with comic books and watching the show religiously. But of course, I knew Lin of Linda and her um, portrayal of the character. You know, it's obviously iconic, and you know she you know, <laughs> she just captured so much of that character in in her. Um, portrayal of it so I that was that was it it was just Linda Carter and just images throughout the years you you'd see images of of Wonder Woman but um no comic books because I hadn't really read that many when I was younger oh I see you I know see. that's yeah that wasn't really where my passions were um I've since gotten to know many writers and artists um and you know, have gotten more informed about it, but it wasn't as if like going in, uh, I knew backstory or that much. It was really learning on the job and then learning from the job. Yeah. So I'm getting, you knew her more as like a pop culture icon. Yes, the time. absolutely. Yeah, just to jump back on a previous topic, we know you voiced one of them for the series and various animated films, but Injustice and Injustice 2 was a time where Wonder Woman had a pretty big change in her motivations and her character tone, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Did you think you'd have to change up your voice a little bit or bring something different when voicing her this way? Or how did you go about that? You know, I did have to bring something different. I don't know that vocally it was so different, but there was a harshness to it that I hadn't done with, with Justice League. Um, you know, she's so combative. Obviously, it's a fighting game. It's, um, you know, there's a level of intensity that's, that runs through that game. And so it was different. It was a different mindset. It's a different image of her. It's, a you know, different action. So, yeah, it felt very different. It wasn't 
the easiest fit for me because I'm so used to playing her as a heroine mm -hmm. and I prefer that, you know? So yeah. I, I said to the, you know, the developers and to the directors when I was doing Injustice, I said, you know, they owe me a good girl, you know, a good woman, Wonder Woman, you know, the good version of it at yeah, some definitely. point down the road. Because, uh, it, it, I mean, some people love playing a villain. I, I don't. I, I mean, put it this way. I wouldn't mind playing a villain. I would love that. But I don't like playing Wonder Woman as a villain. That's just a strange fit for me. Um, so, yeah, it, there was an adjustment there, but it wasn't like, wow, you guys, it was a huge adjustment. I mean, I don't want to be over dramatic about it. It wasn't, uh, you know, a huge deal. But for me, just it, it was a different mindset when I was voicing her. Yeah, I'm sure like emotionally uh, you have, a, again, a certain view of Wonder Woman. And this specific game took a very big departure in terms of the story, in terms of uh, the message they were trying to send. And, and like you mentioned a few minutes ago, like and Andrea told you that, you know, Wonder Woman is a princess and a warrior. And okay. for Injustice, you had to strip that princess part off. And it's like pure warrior. And you bring a little bit of uh, like a steely, uh, very serious uh, villainous kind of an approach. Even though the game is more like a gray area. Like you're not playing a 100% villain. You're not playing a 100% hero. But your, your ver this version of Wonder Woman certainly delved into the more villainous uh, part of the story. So I can imagine then that there was like an emotional difference in playing her, not maybe a tactical difference, but definitely an emotional one, like you said. That's it, exactly. It was an emotional difference. And, you know, it, again, there's layers to this. So um, it's a job and it's my job to give the director, to give the writers, the developers what they want. Um, but personally, I, I prefer playing her, like I said, as the heroic character that she is in a justice league in a dcu online game um because that's my vision of her at this point i mean she's she's a part of me um and my favorite part of her is that heroic side of her tell us a little bit about the chemistry between you and kind of the other voice actors i mean just talking to you i'm just kind of remembering some of the uh like Kevin Some Conroy, of lines Batman. with you and, and um, Kevin Conroy, Batman. Uh, just talk a little bit about how, like how did you kind of the chemistry? How did you guys get such good chemistry? We got lucky. You know, it's lucky that we have that chemistry, and we really, really do. Like, there's a magic to it, and I can't explain it because it just is there, and you can't try to. Um, you can't say, okay, we're going to create chemistry. And you can try to do that. And certainly when people are on film sets and things like that, they'll, they'll spend extra time together. If there's supposed to be an intimacy with them, you know, like, Hey, hang out off the set, if you will. And all that stuff. We were, we were just lucky because it was there from the very beginning. None of us really, I don't think we all knew each other. Um, that well beforehand. I mean, I was aware of certainly, George, because I had seen him in so many, you know, on camera things. And I was aware of Phil Lamar, um, Kevin, but I didn't really know Maria. And I didn't know, I knew of Carl, but I'd never met Carl. Um, and Michael, you know, I didn't really know. So there's just a magic to it. And I, I say that because when we were recently in Denver, uh, we did Denver Comic Con in 2016, and um, we got a re we had a reunion together, and we read from Starcrossed from the script from the se from the show, and you know it was as if like we never left. It was like, oh, okay, how many years ago was this? It just felt so natural and so comfortable, and the audience was there, and they were appreciative of the chemistry, but so were we, like we were kind of giddy in it. We were there with the audience saying, wow, isn't this so cool that we're here, that we're doing this, that you're here with us doing it. We all went through this together and, um, and here we are. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm just grateful that we had that chemistry and that we still have it. 
but I, I can't explain it. It's just something that exists. And you just, when you come across it in any aspect of your life, whether it's personal or professional, you just have to be grateful for it. And, you know, just uh, staying on that topic, I think one of the coolest things that about uh, your show is that you guys used to tape in like one room together, right? So the whole league would be s with their, you know, recording booths, sitting together, standing together. And I'm sure that helped with the camaraderie when and it like comes bouncing off each other. Like energies. you're bouncing off each other's energies like so flawlessly. Uh, I think that, that must be helped much more than, let's say, just recording in a single booth and then later on just tacking all the lines together. Yeah, it can't, you know, it's just, it, it helps so much to have everybody together and, like you say, feed off that energy and, um, and, and grow together, you know, as a team, as a league. And, you know, you start out season one and, and you're still together season five. It makes a huge difference to have all those years in together. Um, you know, in, in video games, you're alone. So it's a very different experience than doing an animated series. And, um, and we know, were not only the cast, like the, you know, the seven of us, but then all the, th these were huge rooms with, yeah. uh, you, you know, how many people were in those casts and how many, um, guests we had every week. So it, it was like, you'd walk into the room and you'd recognize so many of the actors and it would be like, Oh my God, I, I can't believe that Alfred Molina's here. Ed Asner's here. Um, Mark Hamill's here. Like you just couldn't believe all the, the people that were there. That's amazing. To and, play. and that it was and really that, something. And that concept of working in a room together was that something that Bruce Tim uh, was his idea, or Andrea was she the one who thought this would be a good way to go? Because I remember since Batman the animated series, again Mark Hamill and Kevin Connor, like you when you build those years of uh, working together in the same room, like it shows so much that even now, if you get Kevin and Mark doing their Joker and Batman together. It sounds flawless, and the same thing with you guys with Justice League. So, whose idea was that to put you all in one room? You know, I I don't I don't know that I can um, track it back to them because I think that that's the way animation's been done for a long time. So, I don't think it was Bruce or Andrea, but maybe maybe it was back in the day with the animated series. I don't know, but it, animation for me has always been communal in a room, whereas um, any, except for the first video game I did, we did together. But after that, it always, always, always by myself. Um, so Susan, was, was there a certain cast member or members that you especially enjoyed working with on this? There were so many because we had so many guest stars. So, you know, whether it was, um, Ed Asner from the Mary Tyler Moore show that I, you know, grew up revering that show and, and just being, you know, so enamored by him and his history and body of work and just walking in that day and seeing him. Um, it was seeing, you know, being in a room with Mark Hamill. It was, um, I mean, literally, you guys take out the page where it has all of our guest stars and tell me who you wouldn't be in awe of. I mean, the people that walked through those rooms, um, it was just an extraordinary, I mean, everyone that I'd say for, you'd have to ask Andrea, but I would say mostly everyone she asked said yes. That's amazing. To, to wow. appearing on the show. So, wow. you know, that, that from speaks to the quality Alfred, of Ephraim Zimblis, like these were iconic people and, and wonderful actors. Um, so sitting next to Alfred Molina, I mean, sitting next to Fred Savage sitting, I mean, it was, they were all like extraordinary to work with. And for somebody who had never been a lead in a series before, um, I couldn't believe I got to sit at the table. I just could not believe it. And honestly, Honest and truly, to this day, when I go to Warner Brothers to record something, it still gives me that feeling. I still have that feeling of I can't believe I get to do this. That's really, really that's cool. amazing. You know? yeah. and that's that's really um, inspiring to in a way. Um, what were kind of your? Do you have like um, in terms of like episodes? Do you have any kind of favorite episodes, or um, like what? Well, like what kind of in terms of your favorite episodes? Like what? What episodes would you cite for that? 
I mean, there was there were so many because I thought they were so the quality was just extraordinary. I mean, you had people like Dwayne McDuffie and um, you know Dan Reba and you, the, the the talent pool. I mean, you know the men and women who worked on the show, and whether it was the writers, the directors, um, the sound engineers, the artists, the music, the theme music, you know, it was all top notch, which is why I think we're sitting here today talking about it. Because, you know, if you have people like Rich Fogel writing a, a script called Starcrossed, it's, it, it stands the test of time. I mean, it's really, really something special. So, um, you know, this little piggy, I, I talk about Paul Dini's script because it had that brilliant piece with Kevin singing to save Wonder Woman's life. And then it had us walking in the watchtower at the end where I know that he he saved me and what he did to do that. And I love that little scene where I have his number and he knows it and I know it. And there's just something so like flirty and fun about the scene. Um, you know, the once in, once in future thing, um, for the man who has everything, I mean, just um, made of honor because it kind of was a switch of roles for Wonder Woman. She she became like this older mentor figure um, in some ways to the princess. And then, you know, in some ways she learned from the princess, like about going shopping and doing all this other stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it was just, th there's not one that I can look back on and say, wow, mm -hmm. you know, that was a stinker. I mean, they were all, they were all just jewels. Yeah. And, you know, we were lucky enough to, to you know say their words and that speaks to the brilliance of the show like the sh show had such consistent quality from beginning to end really and they again like yeah, they become timeless really quickly because uh when you just look at the scripts you look at the episodes like you guys never delve too much into what's going on in pop culture you guys never you guys kept in your little like universe and because of that you can plot an episode in 2018 and have the same effect that a 2001 episode when it first aired came out. And that's like the beauty of uh, the show and the brilliance of the writers and, of course, the brilliance of the cast that portrayed these heroes. But those, but those writers were, were, were fans of the genre. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it was DC or Marvel. Where they, these were people who um, loved telling these stories and enjoy telling these stories. And you feel that when you read these scripts and when you see them performed. So I think that, that quality that they brought, um, you know, it, that's why the show endures. I mean, for other reasons as well, and it's lovely to be told that as a cast, I mean, I think that's a piece of it, an ingredient of it. Um, but I think the biggest ingredient would have to be the scripts. Yeah, and just to give the audience, and of course yourself, my favorite episode of the show. So, you know, I'm a, a lifelong Superman fan. For me, Superman is like, the uh, hero like i've emulated tried to emulate him my whole life uh the episode that really spoke to me was uh twilight uh it was mm. a two-part episode from season two might have been the first right. two episodes of season two and i just remember the animation shift for that episode i mean starting in season two the animation bumped up like 10 times better than it was in the first season and i remember sitting i remember the exact day where i saw it i was sitting in my grandma's house and we were going to have a sleepover at our house. We all sat together. My grandma made like one of her famous dinners. And it was like an event to watch that episode. And uh, it's because, uh, again, I'm a big Superman fan. And of course the show. And the episode delved with uh, like so many dark themes. And like you guys didn't pull any punches uh, in terms of, again, the voice acting, the script. Like no punches were pulled. You guys went to deep areas to discuss like what these characters mean like the humanity of these characters and just like having this like dichotomy between superman and dark side uh, it was just an amazing episode and still to this day when i think about twilight it's like yeah, that was my gold standard for the series wow well that's that's so sweet and and listen i mean i'm sure george newburn if he were here listening he you know he'd feel so um gratified to to know that yeah, and it, you know, like the beautiful thing about this universe that Bruce Tim built, like there is real continuity 
That's like, mm-hmm. you know, Batman the Animated Series, 1992. Then you get Superman the Animated Series in 96. And then you get Batman Beyond. Then you get uh, Justice League, Static Shock, Justice League Unlimited. And all these things became a universe. And it's funny, like you see these days, Warner Brothers and Disney, they're making their Marvel Cinematic Universe, DC Cinematic Universe. But you guys had that universe built uh, before that concept was even real, like multi-series continuity where... Let's say again, like when you bring up Twilight, Superman and Darkseid, uh, Darkseid brainwashed Superman in Superman the Animated Series in the final episode, and that ended up being one of the main agents of plot point that came in Twilight. And that kind of continuity is just, uh, it's brilliant when you think about it, when you look back at that, how the writers were able to pull this off, like this 10, 12 year arc for fans who've been watching from the beginning, from episode one of Batman the Animated Series to the final episode of Justice League Unlimited, like, that's an insane journey, and we were the generation that lived through that journey as kids. So, you know, I can't even describe to you really in words how impactful that was to us as fans. No, but you are describing it, and it's it's just wonderful to hear it. And I, it's it's things like this. When I talk to fans of the show um, and people who grew up with it, because so much of the time I get told you know, um, that it was part of people's childhoods. That's something, that's a refrain I hear from pretty, you know, from so many fans. And that's been one of my frustrations is that uh, they haven't reunited the, sh- the, the show, um, you know, the, the actors and, and that group since the show ended. And it's, it's, it's somewhat, it's very frustrating because um, there is a built-in audience of like you, and uh, you know, I wish we could do something that, and you know, we tr- I've tried to get us together in you know different cities and things like that. But I think when you create something or part of when you're part of a creation like that, and you recognize the value that it has for so many people, you want to you you know respect that tradition and keep it alive and keep going with it. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's really humbling to hear you talk about it because uh, to know that you had a piece in anything that had an impact and that people remember and that people carry with them, you know, it's, it's very humbling and very moving. So, yeah, just to jump in on that, you know, there's been a lot of fan push for this, you know, JL reunion, bring the original cast back, you know, and of course you've been a very big supporter of that on Twitter as well, you know, um, what are the chances of that? Do you think it's going to be, it's possible that one day we might see all of you guys back for either a film or maybe a continuation series? What are the chances? You know, I, I am such an optimist and I so believe in the power of um, the people and what they want. You know, I, I'm so supportive of it because I think it's such a, worthwhile cause if if I didn't I would never put my voice behind it um wink wink and I would never be as supportive as I've been if to to me it's not just like well I I would get to have another job to me it's like this has been part of people's lives and um this has made such an you know an impact on people why don't we honor that by doing something else now that it's all this time past, uh, like I said, we've done New York and we've done Denver as a, we've done a reunion show and, um, both times the reception has been extraordinary, but Warner brothers has to believe that there's a, a paying audience out there or they won't do it. And, um, you know, that's why it's, it's been, it's so hard to get the word out and to, and to keep growing this. I think people get, anxious like well will this happen could this happen we've been tweeting about it for a long time nothing's happening um but they're they're hearing it and it's just a question of you know do we have what it takes to keep going and to stay with this and uh i believe we do i mean i think i look at people with um with uh young justice and that you know that young justice got to return to me was was awe-inspiring because that was so fan-driven and uh i'd love to see the same thing happen for the justice league and andrea romano already promised that she would come out of retirement to direct it so we just need to convince warner brothers that you know we have a big enough audience and it's 
it's it's not a small thing that it's a big thing and it's uh it's not going away and you know fans like again they've really rallied behind it and so many people <laughs> across all ages want something like this to happen and you guys to return and uh Again, the the wink wink wasn't lost on us, so we're keeping that optimism also. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, when it comes to these like fan driven things, it's all about like you said, making that pitch to Warner Brothers. I know uh, fans have asked for so many different things, and when it comes to things like Young Justice, that was a successful fan campaign in a sense where people did watch it when it came on Netflix. People watched that show. People bought the DVDs. People made their mark, and then Warner Brothers was like, okay we can maybe do something with it. And, you know, you guys did come back, I think, for a project somewhere in the middle for Justice League Doom, right? I think you got most of the cast back, uh, yeah, except not, for but George. It wasn't, you know, it, it, it wasn't the same thing. I mean, that's certainly, uh, you know, that works in the marketing. But the truth is it wasn't the the league. It wasn't a Justice League um, yes, movie. it wasn't a continuation. It was, yeah. you know, a Justice League Doom. It was a Justice League movie, technically. But, you know, it was, it was, um, we weren't all together. In fact, I didn't record with them. And um, it wasn't a story that felt, I mean, as great as it was, it wasn't that thing where we were all together and it was all the voices together again. It really wasn't that. I mean, Kevin and I, and George, we've worked on several projects now. D DCU Online Game, we all work on that. Yeah. And I'm really proud of our work that we do there because the, the team, the creative team at DCU Online, they're huge Justice League fans. So the characters really, um, really are very similar to how we played it in the Justice League. And it's very gratifying. But we don't work together. You know, it's a video game and it's a very different experience. So, you know, for me, we have not been reunited since 2006. And, uh, you know, and it's my goal to, to change that. But can I do it alone? I, I, can I? No, I can't. I absolutely cannot. And, uh, and it, it, it really, my encouragement is born out of my frustration and my belief, my frustration that it hasn't been done and my belief that it can be done. Um, yeah. and I, I don't think I would feel this strongly if I didn't have this ongoing conversation with the fans, because I, as Susan wouldn't be sitting around saying, God, I wish we could do this. It's because I have the relationship I do with the fans of the show and they feel like they can talk to me about it, that I say, how do we not, we have to do something. We have to all come together and make this happen. Yeah. I mean, and you've done such an amazing job again, like bringing that into camp, uh, that campaign to light. There's been Twitter pages created for jail re uh, reunion. Right. Yeah, so people right. have been. No, there, I've, it's it, you know the, the, there have been some amazingly supportive. It's a, it's a community, and I feel that so strongly and so deeply. And um, I I can't tell you guys how appreciative I am that there are those voices out there who who care about us, who want us to come back. And who are trying every day with their tweets to Warner Brothers, and um, you know, I, I just don't want anyone to give up. Yeah, and you know, we're about to, we're gonna have a initiative also in the works with Comic Book Debate. Uh, we want to jump in it as well, and we were gonna use this pat pl eventual podcast as that jumping off point to really get in that game of the jail reunion mix and you know this speaks to one thing about the fan base i gotta give it credit to the dc fans i mean i am a dc fan but just looking at the fan base from uh, an armchair perspective you know they do appreciate filmmakers they appreciate um creators voice actors and regular actors when they know that they care about the pro uh, the characters and when it comes to let's say you like your passion for wonder woman it drips off your voice like it's unmistakable and the same thing with kevin the same thing with george and even tim daly who voiced him a little while back and then you feel it with the creators paul dini anytime i hear paul dini's name i have so much respect for him uh you know that he has so much love for these characters so that's why people will then fight for it you know like the young justice creators they did such a good job with that show. They caught like a fire, uh, like that. Bo they bottled that energy and they got their show to return. And with this new DC streaming platform, so many things are possible. Like in a sense, like 
the one that they're starting to kick off. So I do think that, you know, when it comes to DC fans, I got to give them one shout out for really, you know, getting behind causes, you know, let's whether it's the Justice League animated series or whether they want to support uh, the Snyder Cut for Justice League movie, whatever the case might be, fans get very driven to back up the creators that love these characters. Absolutely. So, so that's There's like a beautiful loyalty thing. there. And it's, uh, yeah. you know, I, to, to be on the receiving end of any of that is, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's really, um, it's so gratifying. I, you know, I can't tell you, it's just so gratifying. Of course. Yes. And Omar, you have something for Susan? Yeah. So, I mean, What's your kind of opinion on, um, you know, Wonder Woman, the movie? I know she appeared in um, Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman. I think that was her first kind of appearance. And then they did, mm -hmm. Patty Jenkins did her uh, solo movie. So what, what right. is your kind of opinion on, on that? And just the, the whole kind of um, DCEU, like the cinematic universe, the whole kind of as a whole, like what's your opinion on that? Well, you know, for me, like, I, you know, I've been talking about the fan base. The fan base for Wonder Woman, you know, has been just tremendous. And fans love her. They have loved her for decades, long before I came onto the scene, um, long before Linda Carter even. So they have waited and waited and waited for her moment to, um, to shine. And, and finally we got that with, with Gal and her performance in Wonder Woman. And she and Patty, um, they created this extraordinary film and it resonated hugely with the audience. It was a wonderful film, <laughs> wink. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it, you know, I was at the premiere. I was, I was lucky enough to be invited to the premiere. And so I sat in that room and the level of love for Wonder Woman in that room was beyond. There were so many times that the audience just erupted into applause. Um, the, the, they were so grateful that it was finally happening. They were so emotional about it happening. And, uh, you know, it was a privilege. I felt privileged to be there in that room and, and see people just so excited at her coming out story, you know, that she, here she was finally getting her, her day in the sun. And, uh, you know, I was, I was thrilled to be a part of it. So I'm a huge fan of the movie and, um, and a huge fan of Gauls and, and Patty's. And I just, but mostly my takeaway from the whole experience was I'm so happy for the fans that they finally, finally get to see their, their girl up there on the big screen. I mean, there have, I'm, you know, I love Batman, as we all know, and I love Superman, but, but at the same time, like how many movies have we seen of theirs? And I'm not saying we shouldn't see them, but yeah. I just like Wonder Woman needs, needs to catch up. She has to get her chance. And, uh, we finally saw that happen and, um, and it, it couldn't have been better. It yeah. just couldn't have been better. Yeah. You know, I don't see it as a competition. It's not like well, it was between me and Gal for the movie. I mean, it's a whole separate entity. Yeah, and so. anything that celebrates Wonder Woman, to me, I'm a fan of, um, for the most part. You know, it, if, if people have goodwill toward her and they want her to succeed, I'm right there with them in celebrating her. Uh, I, I think the more, the merrier as far as that's concerned. But I, I'm one of these people who believes in there should be a lightness to these characters. There should be a heroism to these characters. Um, I, I like, I like a, you know, I like a universe where there's some laughter in it and that the heroes can be heroes um, and they can be bigger than life uh, because I think that's what they were created for. And I think especially in darker times, that's what they're needed for. And uh, you know, I, I, I saw the Justice League movie. Um, I wish we could do the same thing in animation as they were able to do with live action. Again, it's not a competition. So their universe and their world is theirs and 
ours is, is, you know, there's so many crossovers, there's so many similarities, and I think it could all be celebrated. Yeah. That's my fantasy, is that it just all gets to be celebrated. Uh, that's, and, you said it beautifully, yeah. I mean, on that point. I mean, just even when you're talking about Wonder Woman, the emotions, I mean, that is such a universal emotion that people feel. I mean, it, it breaks all barriers, all genders, all uh, creeds, you know, when we were sitting ourselves to see Wonder Woman in that, you know, that No Man's Land sequence, the very mm-hmm. iconic sequence where she, you know, turns around to Steve Trevor and takes off the hood and walks, starts walking towards the soldiers. It's just something so poetic and, uh, again, very meta about it that not only is Wonder Woman appearing for the first time in the movie, but she's appearing for the first time on the big screen. And it's she's coming out to the world, in a sense, both in-universe and our universe. So that was just such a powerful moment. And, Patty it, was. Jenkins. It, was, it was deeply emotional for, yes. for the for her fans and that's that's what I've heard you yeah. know from people because again I'm lucky enough to have a conversation with so many people who care about her that um, the, the gratitude that people felt that like yes yeah. it's here she's here and she's not going anywhere exactly. and the fact that Gal was able to uh, just so embody her and the character and the beauty, the strength, the compassion, all of it. Um, it, it was just, it was just that perfect moment of it coming together. It was, it was quite brilliant. And I don't know if you heard that for one room and two, they've announced that uh, Cheetah is not going to be the main villain for the sequel. I know. I heard that. So I heard that. Listen, exciting. I mean, I'm very familiar with Cheetah being the villain. I mean, yes. I think that's perfect. So I think uh, just, I think Patty Jenkins just has such a good, pulse on Wonder Woman and I think you know as many films as they want to give her to make Wonder Woman I think the better I think with Wonder Woman 2 at least give her a trilogy to you know finish out Wonder Woman Uh, yeah no I think that will happen I mean I think that because it you know obviously the bottom line is you know how successful something is and given the success of Wonder Woman um, the first film I think that it's a guarantee she'll you know be able to finish her run with with the character but what's so brilliant about patty is that she's a fan she loves this character she understands this character she knows the character you know just it, it as you know in this little moment of m- my connection to the to the film um at the party after the premiere i went you know patty was there and i went over to tell her what i thought of the film and i was about to introduce myself to her and she knew who i was which i could not believe you know and uh and, you know, it's just, that's who she is. She knows that there's an animated universe where Wonder Woman exists and comic books and live action. She's a huge Linda Carter fan. So that's who you want behind, you know, behind the scenes creating this. And uh, that's who we have. And just to speak, so to, your, speak to your credit, Susan, I mean, your name has resonance on the fan base profoundly. I mean, you are Wonder Woman for the better part of an entire generation and actually not even today to this day you're still playing the character i mean you are what kevin conroy is to batman you are what mark hamill is to joker i mean you have that hold on wonder woman where in animation at least when i see any other wonder woman i or even better better example yet when i'm reading a wonder woman comic it's your voice that plays in my head uh even more than uh gall let's say who recently took a run because you were the one who was as a kid my voice of wonder woman and that speaks to countless thousands and thousands of people so of course i think it's not even a surprise that patty would recognize you because your impact on the character i mean if you had to make a big three i mean it's linda it's you and it's gall you are the three main wonder women wonder women for everybody basically <laughs> wonder women yeah. um thank you thank you yeah. that's i mean that's very very sweet and dear of you to say thank you i appreciate it i really do so uh just to slowly start wrapping uh, it up now. Uh, so do you have any other like uh, roles coming up in the future? Is there anything uh, with Wonder Woman that, I don't know, maybe you can't say all the secret projects or whatever the case might be, but is there, is there should we expect more Wonder Woman from you uh, going forward? Yes. Awesome. So, <laughs> <we're not laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, I mean, gonna... there's, some really, there's some really cool stuff coming up. Um, you know, just across the board, you know, there's a video game that I'm really excited about. Um, there's some Wonder Woman stuff and then there's other things that aren't related to Wonder Woman. Um, but all good stuff coming up. I wish I could talk about them all, but you know, 
we will be able to talk about it um, down the road. And as soon as I have permission, uh, I will I will reach out to you guys so we can, you know, get the word out and and I can share with you about what it was like to do these things. But yes, awesome. if you if you keep your ears open, you will hear me. Um, Voicing Wonder Woman again. Oh, definitely. So, do you have any last minute questions? Is that yeah, you know, as you know, as we're coming to a close in this podcast, I just want to talk about, you know, the end of Justice League, um, the series. Was that pre-planned? Like, did you guys know that? All right, the last episode is coming. You know, this is it. Or was that like just somebody more of us said that we're going to move to a different direction? Uh, we knew when it was over, over. Like we knew when we did the last episode that it was done done but um you know a five-year run is a is a long run for animation so um i don't think any of us wanted to be piggies about it but at the same time no one wanted it to end but at the end of the day you're as an actor you have very 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 little sway when it comes to those decisions um you know you're you're hired to do a job and and then when that job is over you know, you have no choice but to move on, which is why I have to say, like, when Justice League was over, I never anticipated voicing the character again. When I got to do that with, you know, with Apocalypse and Doom um, and DCU online game, that, you know, that was a gift. I had no expectation of that happening. Um, so, yeah, no, none of us, none of us would have wanted it to have ended because it was just the best gig ever. But at the same time, you know, you're told that this is going, it's going to be over and this is the last season and this is the last episode. And, you know, you have to put on your big girl pants and just, uh, you know, get through it. But it was not easy. And that ending is, is so magnificent. Yeah. Um, of you guys all and, walking you know, down the stairs and you say, you know, the adventure continues. You get yeah, the final and, line. Know, getting to say that and getting yeah. to, to have that line. It's just, um, you know, I just. It just makes me so happy that I got to do that and, and so gratified that I got to say that line and to be part of a show like this, to be part of something historical and that touched so many people. I mean, you know, I'm talking to you guys because the show impacted you and, you know, how lucky am I, um, you know, that I that here we are all these years later. Yeah, I mean, the impact of the show, it just can't be questioned. I mean, and it just speaks. The last episode was very poetic in a sense where – you know, you started this universe with just Batman the Animated Series of one hero. Mm -hmm. And then you, that's Superman. Then you had this main seven heroes, which can, that roster stayed for the better part of the show. Then you guys exploded and got like hundreds of heroes showing up. And the final episode ends with like everyone coming down the stairs. Like every hero who's ever shown up on the show. And then it ends with the final seven and the Trinity is the one who closes it out. Of you with you with one room and Batman and Superman. That's a very poetic ending to the show, I would say. But definitely, yeah, it's, yeah. it's brilliant, and it and it, to, you know, like even as you're describing it, I, it just gives me chills because I'm I was not somebody who grew up with all this, and I it was so moving to me, um, and you know I fell in love with you know with comics and with. Um, you know, the animation through the show, the show introduced me to all of it. So it, having that ending, being a part of that, the, the music, the there was a lot of poetry throughout the show. I mean, there were a lot of really, really um, brilliant scenes where you got to say these, where I got to say these words. And I thought, wow, lucky, lucky me, you know, that I get to say these words. So, yeah, I mean... Uh, that ending is as good as it gets. And I don't think anyone expected, and even I should be clear with the reunion, I don't think anyone expects that there's going to be uh, more episodes. It's, it's, it's not like Young Justice where they had a very short run and it was left very, you know, they didn't get their ending yeah. with Young Justice. And we did get an ending. Um, you know, to, for me, the fantasy would be to have a movie. You know, that would be my fantasy, but we'll see. I mean, stay tuned. The adventure continues. I don't know what's going to be. Oh, well, we're all looking forward uh, to Yeah, that. we'll definitely fight for it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, well, I appreciate that. Susan, just uh, again, I have to say it's been such an honor to have you on our podcast. And just knowing that we had an hour that we just spoke to Wonder Woman is uh, still mind blowing. And I'm sure after this podcast ends, we're going to be pinching ourselves a little bit. 
making sure well, to don't just, pinch don't do pinch this. too hard. I didn't <laughs> want you to hurt you yourself. You got to make sure if it's and real. And also, you know? you know, hopefully this is one of many. I mean, you know, of hopefully course. I can introduce you to some other members of the league, and you can talk to them. Um, you know, and and you know, have them on your show. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's been such an honor. The impact you've had on our childhoods, and even the kids today who are being shown the show is uh, is unspeakable. And you know, maybe it'd be good. You know, like have a few of you guys lead come together. Yeah, you know, that'd be nice. Like maybe at two, once. Yeah, the podcast. you can take you know a few more in the pod, little little group podcast in the future. Maybe you and a couple yeah. other members. That would be that would uh, be fantastic. Yeah, dream come true. Umar, do you have yeah, anything? that would be fantastic. Yeah. We could definitely do that, and uh, you know, I mean that that could definitely happen. That would be wonderful. Oh, awesome! That would be that would be great. Umar, do you have anything to uh, say there? Yeah, I mean, I would say some. I would just echo the same things they said. That it's it's uh, it's it's just a great honor having you on uh, on the podcast, and and you know, we all grew up with hearing your voice, and 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 just even just through the podcast, hearing your voice, because uh, it's very similar. to you know, because it is very similar to yours. Um, it's it's definitely uh, something that you know. After the fact, that we're probably going to be talking to each other and being like, "Wow, we," especially me. And uh, unfortunately, my cousin, my other cousin Samir, he wasn't he didn't get the chance to talk to you today. But um, well, next time, it, hopefully, this will be yeah, one of many conversations. Yeah, and you know, time. and I mean, I you know, it's it's. It's so sweet, especially when you say things about the comic books and hearing my voice. Like there, that there's just nothing sweeter than hearing that and knowing that you know, uh, you sat there with your cereal bowls and watched <laughs> the show. I mean, there's, you know, that's that's, you know, yeah. You sh you guys are making me smile as much as I'm making you smile. So I really, really appreciate it. Well, that's very that's very kind. And again, just thank you so much for joining the podcast. And definitely, this shouldn't be the first that we should continue. Uh, this trend, uh, whether it's having you again alone with us or uh, having another cast member or two, anything that comes up, I mean, we're super, super excited for it. So Anytime, honestly. And, and if, if we hang up and you think of something in about 20 minutes that you say, oh, shoot, we forgot to ask her this, just, you know, um, DM me and, and you can ask me that way or whatever. I mean, just know sure. that there's a line of communication. You can always reach out, okay? Of course. Thank you so much. Uh, Susanna, I think, thank, thank you, Susan, yes, so, much thank for, you so much for uh, coming yeah, so, well, on the And podcast. it's better that we did it this way and not video because that way you can just hear my voice. When, you know, when, when parents come over to the line, if I'm at a Comic-Con and they want to say hello with their children, and if the kids are a certain age and they're younger, and they'll say, you know, sweetie, this is Wonder Woman that we've been watching on the Justice League. And, you know, they'll often look at me like, wait a minute, that doesn't look like Wonder Woman on the Justice League. <laughs> and so, you know, I always tell children to turn around and close their eyes and then I'll do a couple of lines from the show. So it's good that we did this. Oh, so, yeah, you know, definitely. you're not, you can just hear it and no, you and can conjure up Diana Prince from the, from the Justice of League. Of course. And the same thing, our audience who's going to listen to this podcast, it'll be on iTunes and YouTube, SoundCloud as well. I mean, they're going to have a very similar experience. I can promise you that. Well, I'm... I hope so. That's fantastic. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Susan. Thank, Thank you for joining. You, All right. Yeah. Have a great night. Of course. Goodbye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. So we just had Susan Eisenberg on our podcast. Uh, you can tell from our voices we're extremely uh, <laughs> still a little bit reeling from it. But, you know, you can catch us next time. You know, this podcast will drop on Friday. And you can catch us uh, on YouTube. We'll be on SoundCloud. We'll be on iTunes. And you can look for that on Friday. Uh, Umar and Zian, do you have anything more you want to say about it? I mean, it's just been surreal talking to the Wonder Woman, like yeah. the one we grew up with. Yeah, crazy. Know? Same, Umar? Yeah, it's been pretty crazy, and uh, I guess can't wait to, to for the next, next podcast. Exactly. And, you know, next time I know um, the fourth member of our team, Samir, uh, missed this one, but, you know, he'll be back for the next one. And, uh, you know, from myself, from Zayan, from Umar, uh, this is Comic Book Debate signing out. Thank you, guys. Goodbye. <laughs>